Welcome back guys to another one of my Epic 7 YouTube video guides. Today I'm going to be covering the most important mistakes to not make as a beginner or new player. Now today is going to be a bit of a longer video because there are a ton of mistakes that beginners can make that can impact the quality of your gameplay greatly. Now as a beginner you're given a lot of free resources at the start of the game through Adventure's Path and through the one-time clears through Adventure and so forth and it's really easy to blow through all your resources and waste them if you aren't careful enough and know what to do. Now today I'm going to be telling you about the most common mistakes I see with new players that start the game and how to avoid them. Now first off, one of the most important things to not do early game is to not swap your gear too frequently. Now I'm sure most of you know this, but for those who don't, it actually costs 15k gold per piece to unequip. And if you see, if I swap like a weapon here, it's 50k, right? So if I swap like the entire thing, I'm sure you guys already know, it will cost 300k to swap. Now if I mess up and want to swap again, it's like more gold and more gold and keep stacking, right? So you want to make sure when you swap gear that you're 100% sure that you want to swap it. Don't swap it thinking, you know, you might might use it, might want to do it, you know. You have to be 100% certain that you want to do it because the cost stacks up really fast and this is the biggest reason why new players blow through their gold very, very quickly. And gold will be one of the most important resources for you throughout the entire game. You want to save as much gold as you can as you'll need a lot of gold throughout the entirety of the game forever. Now, so if you really want to swap gear, but you know, you're not really pressed on time, it's not urgent, you can always wait for one of the unequip events. There always is an unequip that you can buy from here in the web browser. If I click this and you can see there are loads. After 15, you get a free unequip. This is the unequip. You can just wait for this and do all your unequips then. It's best to do them all at once, you know, so you save a lot of gold. You can also wait for the unequip event that they give you every month. Um, yeah, I would really suggest waiting for them because unequips, you know, the cost really stacks up. So you just want to be really careful with your gold. One of the other most important things that you need to know is that you do not want to use your three star heroes that you summon as fodder. Now, even if you do not need the hero, make sure you do not use it as fodder to upgrade your three star dogs or whatever you're upgrading. Instead, what you want to do, I actually have some, you know, already done, but you're going to want to three star memory imp imprint them. Now, if you look at mine, right, like I have Helga SSS, right? Carmen Rose SSS. Um, I'm already done the quest to get them all SSS. You'll see what the quest is in a second. But you want to get it to SSS like this. And the reason why you want to do it is because it is a huge source of bookmarks for early game players. Now, if you go to Reputation here and scroll down, um, you'll see one of the quests here. I have it already done. Uh, actually, it won't even show you the rewards, huh? So you'll see right here, Reliable Support 30. 30 is the last one. This is basically SSS um, memory imprint, and the reward for this is very, very similar, if not identical, to like the friendship one, where you you'll be getting like 15 plus bookmarks for every like two or three SSS imprints, and yeah, so it's a huge source of bookmarks. The entire quest will give you maybe like over 700 bookmarks, I'd say. And after you do SSS them, you're going to want to go click this button over here under your character. And then you're going to want to, uh, what's it called, transmit them. Now, I'm not going to transmit any of mine, but every SSS 3 star will give you about 8 silver transmit stones, which you'll need to buy a Molagora and other things you need from the silver transmit shop. It's going to be the biggest source of your silver transmit stones. Another very important for beginners to not do is to not let your Abyss and Labyrinth tokens cap every day. Now, Abyss, you'll be getting three tokens daily, and you want to use those tokens to get as far as you can in Abyss, but once you get to a certain point where you can't progress any further, you want to click this button in the bottom left and purify with your tickets. Basically, what purifying does is you exchange your tokens that are remaining to get gold and stigma. Now, if you don't progress at Abyss at all and you don't purify, you're basically just missing out on free gold. This also counts to your daily quest, so you might as well do it, right? There's no point not doing it. The only way you wouldn't do it is if you like forgot, but make sure you don't forget and try to do this every day. It's just free gold. Now for Labyrinth, you'll be getting one token every day. Here's mine. Um, first off, you want to make sure you go into area one of Tyrell Castle right here. Doesn't matter what team you go to. Um, 
if you haven't done this already, which I wouldn't know why you didn't, but if you haven't done this already, you want to clear up to this waypoint, the top right. You want to go west here, you can just press auto and it'll just keep going and keep going until you reach a new area where, you know, it'll, it'll phase you into a different area right here, yeah. And who you'll see is your best friend, Hoochie. Now, Hoochie sells you, as you can see, he can sell you catalysts, he can sell you charms, he can also sell you covenant bookmarks. Now, I would recommend just buying the charms just to make things simple, buying the catalysts, and buying all the covenant bookmarks you see. French bookmarks you don't have to buy, you don't have to buy these artifacts. Just buy the uh, charms, the catalysts, and the covenant bookmarks. Once you've done that, you can just yield. It won't take your token, and you still keep everything. Now, with your token after, you want to just keep progressing through all of Labyrinth until you get to Nixie's Sanctum. You'll actually have a quest here for your um, adventurer's path, which you'll want to do eventually. But I haven't completed it all yet because I don't really need the gear. But for newer players, you're going to want to get this gear from the last area in Labyrinth. It's 78 crit set. Pretty good in PvE. The subs are very, very good. You want to try to get all of them. It also will drop you a lot of ancient coins on the way. And as you can see in the shop, the ancient coins are very, very good for buying charms you can also buy hell raid entry tokens right here and yeah ancient coins are just going to be one of your biggest sources of accessory charms now if you're feeling a little lazy and you don't you know you miss a few days you don't really need labyrinth you don't really need to do it for the uh, gear as well like me you can just let it cap to three tokens and over here you can see you can trade three labyrinth entry tokens for a hell raid token this is also worth buying so, you know, if you don't want to do it, just, just buy the Hellraid token and you're, you're chilling. Another important mistake to not make as a beginner, which is going to sound funny because I'm making the mistake right now, is uh, do not cap on your arena entries. Now, I am capped, but I purposely did not do an arena just to show you guys because I wanted to let my NPC challenges stack. But you're going to want to go into arena, obviously, and... First off, you want to make sure you do all of these. It's basically just free sky stones and free conquest points, which are very, very important. Um, and then here, you're going to want to climb as high as you can, obviously, because arena will give you, you know, free sky stones, like a lot of sky stones. It's your main source of sky stones, so doing arena is very, very important. And if you can't climb anymore, you actually want to fight someone by clicking like this button right here, right? Obviously, and then you're going to want to forfeit. Now, the first two losses, you're going to lose points. So you want to make sure that even if you lose twice, you're going to not lose a ranking. But after that, what happens is you don't lose any points for forfeiting to them after you retry. So, but you still get conquest points and friendship. So when you want to camp at a rank like I do now, what I do is I just int to someone, lose twice, and then just keep losing after. It's a way to farm conquest points without losing ranking, and you don't really have to think about it much. It's also a good way to farm friendship. It's really, really important to farm these conquest points because you will need it in the shop here. There's a conquest point shop. You should be buying this energy every day, as as well as this uh, the friendship energy here. And you should be buying this Molagora every week. Both cost conquest. And also very importantly, you're going to want to buy this slate. There's going to be an unknown slate here. Basically what it does is it memory imprints a 5 star unit for free. It's really, really good to imprint like limited units, collab units, ML5s, right? You can, only buy, you can only buy it once a season, but it's worth it. For newer players though, you might want to skip out on the slate for the first few seasons and buy these pieces. They're level 88. They're fairly cheap, especially the ones that are on sale, and the subs are not amazing, but not awful. Usable. For newer players, it probably will be very, very worth the investment. Some of the pieces here are actually like very, very good, actually, for even late game. Uh, I think the most notable piece would be this piece right here, the speed helmet. It's basically perfect for a soul weaver, so just keep, you know, keep your eyes peeled for good gear from here, and then make sure you use your conquest points a lot. and. Uh, don't let your entries cap. Also, you can buy weapon charms, helmet charms, armor charms, boot charms. That's what you spend it on later into the game where you don't need the gear. But, you know, obviously conquest points are very important, so make sure you just keep farming them no matter what. Now, another huge mistake I see new players make is don't buy bookmarks from the regular store. Now, most people 
probably come here with their sky stones and they just click this, you know, drag it all the way to the right and then just buy bookmarks, right? It's basically five bookmarks for a hundred sky stones and it is not worth now. The reason is, is because the most efficient way is to, you know, refresh the store here and look for bookmarks this way because bookmarks can show up and as you can see, mystics can show up. You can't buy mystics with sky stones unless you do this. Now, I already got 50 mystic medals just from peeking into the store, which you should do every so often. But, you know, refresh the secret shop a bit. You can get some good gear. Um, the gear is kind of expensive, but you, sometimes you do get really good gear, right? and it's really worth buying but just be aware like here's another piece of gear right this is actually not too bad um probably gonna get it actually just because <laughs> i actually uh, don't mind subs on that and then you just keep rolling you'll see friendship bookmarks pop up and i'm not gonna do this forever i'll refresh it a couple more times hopefully find a bookmark so you know sometimes you get unlucky like me and you don't see anything but frequently you'll get like a huge like chain of covenant bookmarks and you'll realize wow this is really worth but someone has done the math on this with like I don't even know how many refreshes but they compiled a lot of data and they say about 80 sky stones will net you five bookmarks and about 200 some sky stones will net you um a mystic metal now I'm getting fairly unlucky so kind of making a bad uh oh I found one see so I went through about 80 here nope let me just buy it now the only downside to this is that, you know, it costs a lot of gold as you saw. I spent about, I don't know, 1.5 mil there, but I also bought a piece of gear, which is the most expensive part of it. But even the Covenant bookmarks and the Mystic Metals, the gold cost will add up. But ever since they nerfed the crafting cost, gold-wise, when you craft a gear in the, what's it called? This area right here, the uh, workshop, it's pretty hard to run out of gold especially if you're doing everything daily so you know I would still try to roll the secret shop you know unless you're like super low on gold you should only really consider the normal shop if uh, you need the bookmarks ASAP for a banner and you do not have any gold or a way to get gold so for beginners it's also very very important when you're farming your early game to not look for specific stats only now what I mean by that is when you go into gear farming mode, whether it be, you know, you're farming wyvern for the gear drops or crafting even, you don't want to go in with the mindset that you only want a certain main stat and a certain substat combination. What I mean by that is like, say you really need DPS gear on your cigarette, right? Don't go into, um, when you're crafting, don't think about, I'm only looking for attack main stat with like speed cell crit damage subs or whatever, and you know. Just throw away every other piece because there's going to be a lot of pieces you throw away even though you're not looking for it currently that are really really good now you want to kind of look at it generally and then you know look at all the pieces and see you know what's good and what's not now i'll show you an example right here right like let's say i'm looking for i don't know i'm going to be looking for t a tank helmet so like speed you know health defense right don't really recommend crafting website but it'll be easier for me to show you like here so I'm looking for a tank helmet, right? And then, I don't know. Nothing here is really good. Like this one's like okay. Not really a tank helmet though. It's kind of like a like a bruiser piece, you know? It's still okay, you know? I would still lock this, right? I'm not gonna sell it, you know? Even though I didn't get like a good tank helmet here, you don't want to just sell good pieces that you're not looking for. You kind of want to take a step back and look at it, you know, generally from for what you can use in the future, you know? Now, a lot of new players, even mid-game players, there are a lot of usable gear. You want to be very, very conscious in not doing that. If you don't know, you know, ask around, ask friends, you think this is good, you think this is good, stuff like that. Now, generally, especially with substat gems out, you want to roll gear with three decent subs, or, you know, even two, depending on where you are in the game. And, you know, even if you don't need it now, you'll probably need it in the future, you know. And what you want to roll really depends on where you're at at the game. Like, for me, my gear standards are pretty high, but for newer players, don't pray for like perfect gear with perfect subs. Even blue gear is usable for new players that have two good subs, you know? So it's very, very important to not think too much about the future or too much about what you need now. Just roll, you know, things that you think will help you progress now and things that you may be able to use in the future because you can also just always just lock the gear. You'll see like I have a lot of gear locked. Like this is locked, right? This is locked. Do I have one from like a while ago? Maybe not in rings. Uh, 
like this is locked at 12, you know, this is locked at 3 from a long time ago, it's like, you'll eventually want to roll it, right? Now you can take some time when you have off and then, you know, just scan through your inventory and then decide what you want to do with the gear then. But in the beginning, don't, don't be like hasty to throw away your gear. It's really important to hold on to it and kind of like evaluate it later, especially when you're uh, new to the game. So another big mistake I see newer players make is they just gear units randomly. They're like, oh, I pulled this unit, I'm gonna gear it. Oh, I, I pulled main Chloe, right? I'm just gonna gear it. Well, you kind of want to gear units that aren't one dimensional and there's going to be a list of units that are very, very good early game. Um, you want to make sure units can be used in multiple areas of content. So say, like I said, I just pulled main Chloe and, pulled, and geared her and upgraded her all the way, mold her, you know, wasted a lot of resources into her basically. Well, what can she be used for? Yeah, sure, she's good in RTA, she's good in Guild Wars, maybe Arena, but what else? Well, she's completely useless in PvE, and yeah, she's not gonna really help you, right? For early game, that's really bad. You want to be able to tackle multiple areas with, you know, the same few units. That way, you can get through things faster, and you can use less resources early game. Now, an example of this would be like, like Aeros, right? He's a beast in PvE, everywhere basically. Abyss, yes. Labyrinth? Yes. You know, Expedition? Yes. Adventure? Yes. Now, you know, by doing this as well, gearing only units that can be used in multiple areas, especially early game, right, you're going to be spreading your gear less thinly. The more units you have, right, you're just going to need more gear naturally. Now if you spread your gear out too much, because everyone has like a baseline for units to be usable, like me, like I would even say for my gear I have like way too many units built, I need to like ungear some units. Like your units just overall, the quality of your units gets lower and their stats are just worse overall. It's better to have fewer units that are very well built than you know a lot of units that are poorly built. That's why I, everyone says that gear farming is the most important part of Epic 7 and I agree. And you want to, knowing this, you want to you know build your units around it, you know. Build less units that can do more things and that's very very important. Now, one of the m biggest mistakes out of all of them that I see early game players and even mid game players make is you want to be very careful about who you skill enhance. Now, I see beginners, even like like older players, you know, just enhance everything. You're like, I got a new unit, I love this unit, I'm gonna enhance it. Well, you want to be really careful in doing that because to enhance skills of units, you're gonna need something called Molagora. Now what is Molagora? It's a very scarce resource that is time gated. You can only get a limited amount every month and you can only get them in certain shops. Now to get all the mole you can every, every month, you're going to want to buy it weekly from the transmit stone store, weekly from the conquest point store over here in the seed. There's also one in the guild shop over here and if you go to automaton tower in battle, there's I think another one and then not here. Inside store, you can also get one every time it comes out at the end, and then also like from expeditions over here, you can get the mola. Now expedition one is kind of a lot harder to get for early game players, but later on you're gonna want to get this, right? Now, the molas you only really want to use it on units that you use a lot. Now you'll see my S10e. I use her all the time in PvP and RTA. I have her maxed out. She's a DPS unit too, so all the stats are very very good for her. So, you know, you only really want to use it on units that you use a lot and you actually get the most benefit from. Now, S10A, since she's a pure DPS unit, 15 iron is not a bad idea, especially if you use her all the time. Other units, though, that I use a lot, but I don't have a lot of mole investment in, would be like Krau. And the reason is, Krau's plus four here, he's a tank, right? All, all he does is really buff your team with his S2, so I lowered the cooldown, and, you know, you can maybe enhance this to three or even 5 if you want to use him as a provoke bot but it doesn't even go to 100 so I don't really even recommend it, it's kind of RNG if it got out to 100 I would do it and his S3 right, his signature ability you're probably wondering why don't you mola this, it's his best ability, you one shots people well you only get one off per fight anyways it's a 6 turn cooldown, it goes to 5 but you don't really use it for the first few turns right on crowd because you want to wait for him to take damage so you just want to think about like are you really getting a lot of benefit from Molagora? Because Mola is a very, very scarce resource, like I said. You see, I'm like sitting on 91. You know, I'm not, I'm not too uh, quick to spend it all. You know, other units that are worth moling for you as a new player would probably be like Arbiter Vildred, you know, other stuff like that. Um, generally, DPSs, it's safer to mold them. 
but like tanks like Lilius, I have it plus two. You could probably get her to like plus six. She's okay. Um, like Charles, you know, I don't use him for PvP, so I don't have him mold too much. I only mold him for Banshee. I only mold him to the point where he could one shot the first wave of Banshee, right? Um, LR Crow, I use him all the time. So I mold MT Seren, I use him all the time. Made Chloe is all the time, but I only mold some of her healing because I wanted slightly more healing, and this was the cheapest uh, skill enhances. Plus one, plus two, plus three only cost one mole each, and I just mold the skill cooldown. Everything else I don't care too much about, right? Cause she's kind of like a S3, and that's it, and sl like small healing. So yeah, you really want to be very, very uh, conservative with your molas and think about who you want to use it on. Because I've seen players that go through all their mola and drop to like almost zero, and they're basically screwed, right? Because you're just waiting and waiting e weekly for more mola so you can make your unit stronger. Because Later on, you're not going to want to use units, especially DP unit, DPS units in like RTA and like Arena and Guild Wars, unless they're 15, right? Some units, uh, you don't need 15, but, you know, like TM Luka, you don't, right? She's a S2, S3 wonder. But yeah, you just you just don't want to uh, waste your moles too much. Now, another big mistake I see newer mid-game players make is ignoring equipment conversion. Now, equipment conversion is from one of these boxes over here. You get these gems. Choose the main stat of the gear you want to craft. It's basically another crafting system. You can choose the main set and the stat. And where you do it is in Sanctuary and Alchemist Steeple. You want to have the building improved for it. You go to equipment conversion and you can choose the piece and the, you get to choose the stat on it. So I'll just do a weapon. And you'll see I have an attack gem already. Do that. And I can make a immunity set weapon. Now, if you do for right side, you can choose the main stat and change it. It's left. I'm doing a left side piece, so I can't really change it. Now, this would have been a great weapon, but it is low rolled. So you can see that you still have to go through the RNG of substat rolling, but it just takes away two aspects of the RNG: main stat and set. Now, this is such a shame because if this was rolled a little better, I could actually roll it, but it's all low rolled, so. For me, I will probably just end up selling this, and it's sad, but it has to be done. Now this is very very good for early game because you can just keep making speed set speed boots, and speed set speed boots are very very important for early game PvE, and kind of hard to get early game, so I really recommend doing that. And the way you get the cores to choose the set is, you need to extract gear. Now if you're farming wyvern or whatever, I would suggest... Um, Extracting blues because you get seven cores for each, and selling purples and reds because if you extract purples, I'm pretty sure you only get eight, but the gold you gain is a lot like greater than just the one core difference. So it's better to extract blues and sell purples and reds if you don't need them. Now, if you don't know how to get the chests for it, you get them from the transmit stone store. You get them from the guild store, you get them from world boss, and you can get them from expedition. Very, very important to use them to craft gear, especially right side gear, and very, very, very good. Now, these are probably like the most common mistakes I see new players make. I'm not saying they're the only mistakes, but you know, they're just the most frequent I see when I help new players. And just keep in mind that the more mistakes you do make, it's not the end of the world, it'll just, you know, make progressing like a little slower, a little less efficient. Um, it's okay to make mistakes, that's how you learn, but you know, I'm just trying to let you know beforehand what you should try to avoid for a better you know, Epic 7 experience. Uh, thanks for watching guys, I hope you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below, and hopefully I'll get another video out soon.